Good evening and welcome to the meeting of the Arts and Culture Commission of Prescott Valley on this January 20th, 2021. I call the meeting to order and I welcome all of you who are here. First, I'd like to introduce you to someone. We have a new member in our commission. Her name is Barbara Bayless. And Barbara, we'd like to have you tell us about yourself. And do you want to be on this commission? Thank you. Um, well, I have a bit of a long history. For 35, 40 years, I worked in the insurance industry. And about 2009, I decided to follow a passion that I kind of put in the background for a long time. Um, and I started back with art. Uh, my medium is pen and ink and watercolor and on um, archival watercolor canvas. So it's not on paper, it's a little different. Um, I started working with a community in Michigan City, Indiana, where I lived at the time, and got involved with various uh, galleries and groups. And at some point, I got involved with uh, developing the art district in Michigan City. Uh, I worked with many uh, local businesses and artists, and we developed a, a beautiful community that displays all different types of arts. Um, not only sculpture, but 2D photography and whatever, and it became wildly successful. Um, in addition to the management of everything, I also am an active artist and have displayed at many venues in the Midwest, in uh, Indiana and Michigan, and Illinois, and when I moved here in 2016, um, I joined a couple of groups, but I am currently a member of TIS, which is in Prescott. Um, I displayed work there in 17, 18, and 19, and well, everything kind of fell apart last year because of COVID, but um, my interest in this is I w really enjoyed working with um, the community and artists, developing art, um, promoting artists, and, and also culture because there's more than just paintings and whatever, there's all types of uh, different types of art, uh, from food to music, to sculptures, to paintings. So that's why I decided to join in. I'm very glad I've been welcomed in. Thank you. Well, we welcome you and we're so glad you're here. I think you'll be a wonderful addition to our group here. Not, not only is Barbara an artist, but the, all three of us sitting here have something in common. We all have Chicago links. So, sorry, you're just being inundated from the Midwest. As a matter all of fact. All of us trying to be Westerners, okay? Yeah. Barbara, as a matter of fact, you mentioned Michigan City. I uh, spent a lot of time in Michigan City fishing off the pier. Uh, <laughs> you're lucky. The water's yes. high now. <laughs> yeah, that's what I understand. So, welcome. Thank you. At this point, Mary Lou, would you please call the roll? Yes, I will. Vice Chairperson Nancy Smith. Present. Secretary Andy Sinclair. Present. Commissioner Barbara Bayless. Present. And uh, Chairperson Lindsay Quisenberry and Com Commissioner Edward Lira, both absent. We do have a quorum. Thank you, Mary Lou. May I have a motion to approve the agenda? You've seen the agenda. Uh, I make a motion that we approve the agenda. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> I need a motion to approve the minutes of the November 18th, 2020 regular meeting. Commissioner has had a chance to look over the uh, minutes for the November 18th, 2020 regular meeting. I make a motion that we approve the uh, minutes as written. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Isabella, would you like to carry on with our announcements and our presentations? Of course. All right, so um, we would love to welcome Ed Riley back. Um, Ed has given us some updates along the way for his obelisk that he's working on, and we have some new pictures that we're so excited about um, seeing. This is the first time that these pictures have been shown, and Ed's here to give a little bit of an update as well. So he's gonna come on up and uh, talk to you all. Okay, um, 
Hello, everyone at the commission this evening. Thanks for inviting me over to talk about the <clears throat> project I've been working on. Um, on the uh, screen, you'll see this is the uh, plaque that's been dedicated to the mining section. Uh, we basically now have got the designs uh, finalized, and so now we've gotten into the sculpting phase. We've been working on it diligently for the last three months, and you'll get to see uh, all three sides. But uh, here is the miner. Uh, it's, he's uh, got a pick on his shoulder, and he's got his uh, faithful dog next to him. Uh, there's a raven now kind of watching over things, and the gold is coming out of the mine. And so I'm really excited about this. You could see that I've used some uh, actual molds from crystals that are going to represent the top of it. And then I figured out also how to uh, put gold uh, veins in the other rocks that are above the mine. So some of this is sort of abstract, but other parts of it are actually realism. So I'm uh, pretty happy the way this is coming along. Uh, here we go to... The next one, this is for the um, Granite Mountain Yavpi. Uh This is their side, and uh, this is coming along quite well, too. There you can see their logo at the bottom. Uh, Granite Mountain, which is a little bit hard to see right now, is, is well developed. There's somewhat of an abstract cloud above Granite Mountain, and uh, there's an eagle, and that is going to have a, a basketry design. So. The uh, symbolism there is that there's a star shape that's up above that's uh, pretty prominent in the Avapai tribe's uh, imagery. So I have the star up above that's more or less em em <coughs> emulating uh, good energy that comes down through the eagle, through the rain, down onto the mountain. So uh, there's also basketry uh, in the foreground, so, and their um, wiki up. So I'll try to. Uh, Develop, you know, make a d design that it, you know includes all the different uh, aspects of their culture into a nice uh, composition. The third one is the ranching, and that's coming along quite well too. Uh, you have uh, <clears throat> there is uh, a little sign there, uh, as I'm not sure if everyone's aware, but. Uh, Prescott Valley used to be called Jackass Flats, and so I've got a little jackass over there kind of laughing at everybody that comes along to kind of remind you where our, our origin started. And then Coyote Springs, I've got a coyote there. So I put a little sign uh, pointing uh, one side to Jackass Flats, the other one to uh, Coyote Springs. Uh, this is somewhat of, uh, oh, a make-believe ranch. It's the ideal ranch right there. Um, Tom Mix is uh, greeting everybody that's coming into the ranch. He's been a, a local movie star and a quite important character in the Prescott Valley and Prescott area. So, uh, and, and then you have the pastoral scene of um, um, cattle grazing in a pasture with a windmill. I've also took the symbol from originally that I was going to put in the uh, mining section uh, with the train, which I think is an important um, Elements to the history of Prescott Valley is the train system. Uh, up there, uh, I've got the, now the trains pulling the cattle cars that are going to take the uh, cattle off to uh, market. Above that is the uh, the antelope, which are an important part of the natural flora and fauna of Prescott Valley. Uh, the San Francisco peaks in the distance, and then uh, up above you have uh, the moon, who's kind of smiling down on everything. So try to create something that's going to be really interesting and tell the story. So uh, I'd like to invite uh, everyone to come by. Please call for an appointment. Anyone is welcome to come by and see progress on this. What my schedule is now is I hope to have this totally completed sculpting by the end of February. So it's pretty exciting right now. We're getting into um, the final stages of this. And so now it's really starting to take shape. So thanks again for the opportunity to uh, put this all together. If there's anyone that has any questions. I wonder if you'd just go on and say, once the sculpting is done, what's the next step? Well, yes, then we're going to go to making the molds. Uh, there will be uh, 18, maybe 19 rather large castings 
uh, for the whole entire monument, then the mold making process will start. I'd like to have sort of a, a debut or a little opening at the end of February. Maybe we can put that on schedule so people can come and view the actual finished sculpture because that's Great. really going to be an exciting thing. Yeah. Um, we also have uh, employed Doug Stroh to do the design on the uh, actual uh, corner over there, and those plans were submitted on Monday, so we're on schedule with um, you know that technical part of things so i think it's coming along quite nicely and for our viewers if when this is all completed but the three sides we've just looked at will all be in bronze yes be quite beautiful also i'm working with morgan signs a company in prescott that's going to be helping with the glass the plexiglass design the other side which is the modern or the future side is already pretty much completed that's the stainless steel structure that's going to hold the glass that's going to light up at night so uh, it's got quite a few little elements to this piece <laughs> so beautiful um anyone have any questions okay i think it's great i'm always impressed oh well thank you very much yes uh it's been a lot of fun, and uh, it's a labor of love. We love it, too. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Ed. Thanks for keeping us up to date with the progress. Yeah, thank you, Ed. I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm just blown away by how it's oh. turned out. It's so exciting to see. And just to remind the community, um, we're looking at a May install on the corner of um, Lakeshore and Skoog here at the Civic Center Complex for this sculpture. And it's, these bronze panels are 18 feet tall. Is that correct? The bronze panels would be 12 feet tall. The overall sculpture. Yeah, so overall looking at an 18 and a half foot tall, really exciting sculpture going in in May. So thank you, Ed. Thanks for coming. We appreciate you. Go ahead, Bella. All right, so moving right along, um, I would love to invite a couple of people down. Um, we uh, had our Create a Tree display and Create a Wreath display in the month of December in the library. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, both of these groups um, were first time entries, I believe, and they both won the People's Choice Award um, with uh, hundreds of votes, so it was really exciting to see. And I would love um, Vice Chair Smith and Secretary Sinclair to step on down. We're going to present um, A and B Prospecting with the award of Best People's Choice Award for Create a Tree. And we're going to present the Hunt Homestead with the People's Choice Award for Create a Wreath. So I believe everyone is here. We'd love to have you guys step down. All right, so we have the award and certificate for A and B prospecting. And um, we're, is it your first year this year? So we're so pleased to have you guys. You put together just an incredible display. It was so awesome. So I'll hand this to you. And if you want to step right to the side, we'll award the hunts as well. And then we'll get a picture with everyone. All right, and we have. Can you tell me your names? I'm Shannon. Shannon? Josephine. Josephine, thank you guys so much for participating. We loved your wreath. It was our first year doing wreaths, and um, it was a huge success. You guys got a ton of votes, so we loved having you. And here's your certificate, and congratulations. And commissioners, if you'd like to step in front, we're going to get a quick picture with everyone. Congratulations. Thank you. 
thank you guys so much for coming. We love this program. It's just, um, it's such a fun way to celebrate the holidays and decorate the public library. And, um, and again, these were two groups that were first time participants and they ended up winning the People's Choice Award. So it's just a ton of fun. Um, and we, we just loved having them. So congratulations to both of those groups. Isabella, what kind of classes and programs do we have coming up? All right, so um, your community services department does have some fun things coming up that we'd love to tell you about. Um, we have our Youth Art Month coming up. So Youth Art Month is a nationally recognized holiday. It's the entire month of March, and really it's a celebration of um, youth arts, performing arts, visual arts, and it's a way for us to remind our community how important and how vital the arts are to our youth and how important and vital our art teachers are um, to our community and the funding that goes with that. So um, what the commission is doing again this year, they've done it for years, is um, offering a space for a showcase for youth art, um, and that is the visual side of the arts, and we're gonna do that in the public library this year. So um, we really invite the community to come out the entire month of March, March 1st through April 3rd to the public library and to view all of this incredible K through 12 art. It's actually pre-K through 12 art. Um, so we have everything from last year, the first prize winner uh, was a tiny robot made by a preschooler, um, all the way up to some incredible high school art from very talented um, student artists. And it's just a really fun way to kind of celebrate our youth. So. Um, we really invite you guys to come out and we will be telling everyone more about it as well as announcing the winners, first through third place winners in each age category at our March meeting. Wonderful. And then another event we have coming up. So Extravaganza and Family Arts Festival we throw every year. Usually it's here at the Civic Center Complex and we have a, a huge egg hunt and it's a ton of fun. And you know, this year we didn't wanna just say, cancel it all together, we can't do it. We wanted to figure out a way to still have this really fun experience, um, but safely. So we're doing an Easter egg hunt drive-through. Um, it's going to be in the style of Valley of Lights. Most people in our community are familiar with the Valley of Lights at Fane Park. So. Um, we're gonna ask you to come on down to Fane Park on March 27th. It's 10 a.m. till noon, and it's gonna be a drive-through experience. You're gonna see the Easter Bunny hiding in the trees. You're gonna see eggs scattered throughout the hills. There's live performances. There's giveaways. There's prizes, music. It's the whole extravaganza experience, but in a drive-through. And then the really wonderful thing that we're doing is it is a donation-based experience. So if you are able to donate any money towards the end, there's gonna be collection jars, just like Valley of Lights that you're familiar with. But this donation is gonna go back to our HUSD um, arts teachers to help them buy supplies for their classrooms. Um, that's kind of the family arts festival element of it. Usually our teachers are able to raise money individually for their programs and classes. Um, they can't do that in person this year, but we still wanna raise money for them. It's so vital, especially now, they're being asked to teach remotely, then come back to class, teach remotely, then come back to class, and um, we need to support them probably now more than ever. So this is kind of our way of trying to do that um, and also give a really fun event to the town. So again, that's uh, Saturday, March 27th, from 10 a.m. till noon, down at Fane Park. And you can't miss it. I'm sure there's gonna be a little line like you always see with Valley of Lights. So it's gonna be really fun. I think we're gonna have a lot of community excitement for this. Yeah. And then once it happens, I can see it going on again and again and again. Yeah, it might be a fun way to do it post-COVID. <laughs> Would you like to favor us with the, the division department update? Yeah, so we'd love to give a little update um, from the Arts and Culture Commission's uh, December monthly report. These monthly reports can be found always on um, pvaz.net on our website. 
Um, but in December, we did showcase 26 trees and five wreaths for our Create a Tree exhibit. Um, we had even more applications than that. Some groups that intended to show um, had to drop out last minute you know, because of the way things are right now. Um, but we still had a wonderful show. We filled the library, and I think our People's Choice Award winners had some amazing things that they created as well as everyone else. So that was awesome. And then um, we had another new artist apply for our public art display, which is the art display we always hold here in the library. And we had 12 total hours of volunteerism for our arts and culture division. Um, additionally, we have our social media page, um, Prescott Valley Arts, on Facebook and on Instagram. And uh, we're growing it. We'd love for the community to follow us. We have fun things that we post on there every day. Um, our top post on Facebook in December was a post about Star Wars. The Star Wars was actually partly filmed in Arizona, so that was kind of fun. And um, our top post on Instagram was a birthday post about um, Matisse. So our community loves seeing those kinds of facts, and if you enjoy those kinds of things, follow us at Prescott Valley Arts, and you'll have more of that. Um, we're really growing some engagement there, and, and that's where we're going to continue to update you about events and projects and all that great stuff. All right. I don't know that we have any public input today. I, seeing none, anyone's welcome to come up and ask us any questions or present anything that they have. Seeing none, I'd like to announce that our next meeting will be our work study. In February, on February 10th, we'll be meeting in conference room 330 in the, uh, in the Civic Center. And then our regular meeting will be the following week, February, Wednesday, February 17th at 5.30 p.m. right here in this auditorium in the library. Is there any other further business anyone wishes to present? Hearing none, I declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you.